Hi, this is Peter from Payne, and you're watching Metal Shop TV. I'm working right now on it. Uh, I think first single is coming in August and the next one in September. And then, of course, we do the European tour and we're coming here as well. So you have to go and check it out. Um, I think in the beginning of January or February, beginning of February, I think the album will be released. I mean the full, but we will keep on just releasing singles and singles every other month up till then, so. Uh, I think it's more, uh, more brutal. I mean, not, not, not brutal, but mo more industrial, more distortion. Uh, at least the songs I have now, I have a few more to write before. So uh, uh, it feels a little bit some rebirth kind of feeling, like the old album, a lot, a lot of industrial distorted stuff. But there's also um, a little bit, I think it's a little bit more up-tempo. Maybe uh, Coming Home was a little bit sleepy compared to this one. So, uh, yeah. And uh, there's a lot of uh, new ways for me of singing, but also even going more brutal with the vocals on some songs. So there, there's a big mix. And yeah, there's some songs it's like a little bit new for being pain. I think it's a little bit more modern. Not new metal, but more modern, you know, in, in sound and the way of uh, constructing the songs and stuff, so. Good question. I, I think a little bit of both. I mean, uh, I really like the uh, Post Human album. I think it's really good production and um, really cool songs. I, I, I really like it. I, I don't know too much about them in the past or, or the next ones either, but that album I really like. Uh, mainly the, the production is really good. I, I really, you know, I'm a producer nerd, so, so it, it sounds really good and I, I think it's really cool songs in there, you know. Um, but I also like the old stuff, you know, like Ministry or, or The Crips or things like that as well. So I think maybe the new Pain album is a little bit mixed in between all this kind of things, you know. I think it's always been this crossover kind of thing, you know, uh, that comes out, you know, as, as soon as uh, your genre of metal is like it doesn't go any further, you know. It seems like people start crossing over a little bit here and there, and then it starts growing again in a different kind of form. So we've seen that for 30 years. How, how you know, um, like death metal was at its peak, and then it became a little bit different kind of death metal because they did some crossovers from other things. Fuck! What the hell? <laughs> Flies. Uh, so I mean, and then it kept on staying up and growing but in a different way. It's not the death metal that I was grown up with. So, I mean, generations, new generation, new thinking. So I think it's a natural thing. And it, it I mean, I prefer the old fashioned, you know, end of 80s death metal, but you know, there's good stuff today as well. So um, uh, I think it, maybe it's good for the evolution of, of, of the music genres. In, in general with all of them, you know, I, I'm not against anything really, you know, if they do it good, they usually are successful. No, <laughs> not really. I was just like, oh, I made a new song. Let's put it out. Um, I don't know. I, it, I guess it's catchy. It's got good rhythm. Um, the lyrics is about what we all went through a couple of years ago, you know? So, um, I, I really don't know. I, I have no clue why things are working better than other songs. I, I really don't know. It's a, it's a mystery to me, you know, how things works. And I, I didn't expect that it was gonna 
yeah, become that, that big. That video, I mean, I really try to stay out of videos. The, the only video that I was like directing and coming up with the ideas was actually the one when we were in space with Lindemann. Which song was that? Yeah, you know which one I mean. That one I actually script I wrote when we flew back from recording Stay Off video. And then of course we changed a little bit here and there. But uh, mainly that was, I had my nose all in it but that's probably the only video I ever cared, uh, you know, to be involved in as a director or whatever you want to call it. So, uh, I mean, mainly you, uh, you take a chance when you start working with new people. You don't know what it's going to look like or how it's going to be. I mean, they can tell you everything and you read the script. It's like, yeah, that sounds interesting, but you never know the, the result of it. But we were lucky. So it was Andre who did it and he did a great job, I think, you know. Yeah, it is. It's a lot of waiting, you know. Uh, I think it's the same thing when they do movies and stuff, you know. They go up for five minutes and do their lines and stuff, and then they have to wait for different locations or different setup and stuff like that. But I don't know. For me, it's kind of interesting because uh, it's a different side of uh, what I do. I mean, you know, I do the music in the studio and stuff like that, but this has to go along with it somehow. So I'm kind of interested in it. Well, uh, my goal is, like I said, to write a couple more pain songs. So I'm done with that because I really don't want to juggle in between. I did that before and the outcome is not that good. It's better to focus on one thing. Uh, now I know, yeah, eight years last time and now pain, seven years. But it's been so much stuff in between. So it's, it's been really hard to focus on sitting and writing and stuff, unfortunately, you know. Did, two Lindemann albums, we did a lot of paint tours, we did a lot of hypocrisy tours on these albums that came out the last eight years. So it's been busy, busy traveling and, and playing. So I, I couldn't really focus. And I, I'm the person, I need very calm and just quiet around me. I don't want the phone to ring or nothing because then all of a sudden I'm like, fuck, I lost my thing, you know? So, uh, and the older I get, the more sensitive I get. So I don't know. I don't know, I mean, when we created music and, and, and lyrics, and, I mean, I didn't do the lyrics, but when we wrote together, uh, it was so easy. It just went like, whoosh, like flow, you know? We didn't even think about that uh, we were writing. We were just doing like demos and stuff, like for the first album, and all suddenly we had like seven, eight, nine songs. I was like, oh shit, maybe we should check if someone wants to sign us, you know? Uh, it, it worked very well, you know? Um, the chemistry between us you know i come up with the song we listen to it we go through and change some stuff you know like only four times here or you put this part here and this and that you know the arrangements and stuff it was fairly easy both of the albums it's really hard to say which one uh was i mean the first one was just we were just exciting to 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 create something together because we known each other for a very long time and uh the second album, I guess we felt a little bit more pressure because now we were, you know, a band or whatever you want to call it, a project. So uh, uh, maybe it wasn't as calm and easy as the first one because the first one was just like a hobby thing. And now it became serious with the second one. And plus, first album sounds so fucking shitty. I didn't mix it. <laughs> I wasn't allowed. Uh, so. Uh, I can't really listen to the first album. I, I, I listen to the live um, um, album on those songs because I, I don't like the sound on it. Because I, I, did, I thought I did good sound on it, but I was not allowed to, uh, to use our, uh, my mix. So um, they had someone else to mix it and rearrange some stuff and uh, I don't know. So production wise, I like the, the second album better.
It's fucking great. I mean, he's a hell of a drummer. He's not there just because he's my son. He's there because he's a f amazing drummer. You know, he's, I don't know, he, he um, is really good on technical stuff and really fast shit. And now I'm pulling his break and he's playing ACDC all the time, you know, with pain. But, you know, he, he, he knows what's going on. He's got it in his blood, that's for sure. You know, he, he can make a, a normal rock beat swing, you know, and like Phil Rudd, probably the only drummer that can just go doo, 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 and, and it's still like really groovy and shit you know and that's really important and I mean first time we played together I think it was like 13 or 14 years old he jumped in it was some release party we uh, my friend had for his album route there and he asked me if I could come up and play a little bit so I asked my kid you know can you do that uh, so I did like three hippo songs and two pain songs and he was sitting, starting the computer with the keyboards and the backtracks, and it was sitting just going. Whoosh. I still have it on film. It was amazing, you know. And it's great to do something together because, in the past, when he grew up, he was, you know, I was gone not too often because Hippo was never really a touring band that much. But uh, now he can see what I did, and now he's in it himself. Same there, no time. If I produce, I really want to, you know, be focused and not have something in, in, in my back head or a bunch of emails all the time. Oh, we have to plan this tour and blah, blah, blah. And I really want to be focused. So that's a, also another thing while I just kind of stepped away a little bit just to focus on my bands instead. And also I have a great studio, but in the past I could never use it because it was always booked with other bands, of course. But on the other hand, all the other bands that I recorded from 93 and up till, yeah, 20 years, they kind of influenced me to write my music as well, because I heard new music all the time from all these bands, so it kept me inspired to write. It depends, I think I'm, I'm very diplomatic, I think I'm like in between two sides fighting, you know, and try to solve problems. Uh, but also, it depends what kind of band it is, you know. If they want you involved, like tearing the song apart and put it back together before you record it and things like that. I never listen to pre-productions people send me. Uh, I, I listen to it once and, and then I put it away. And then when we start to record the first song, I take that first song and listen to it. And I go, yeah, this is wrong. How about doing this or let's change that? Because if, if you listen to pre-productions all the time, at the end you get so used to it, so you don't hear the, the, the fault of it. So that's why I only go through it once, and then when they show up in the studio a couple of months later, then I kind of know what to do, because it's in the back of your head, and at least suggest what they want to do. Some other bands, they just just want you to, to record them and you know hold the camp working, you know and uh, mixing it so it's different from different bands and also from different kind of genres what you record you know my brother actually started uh, produced their th uh, three first albums and then i start uh, i mixed uh, was it art of war and then my brother he, he closed the studio because he wanted to do something else so they started recording with me so actually they're I mean, they live 45 minutes from where I live, so we're, you know, neighbors, so to speak, so we know each other. And now when I didn't have time, Jonas that sits in, in the same building with his studio, uh, Black Lounge, now he's uh, recording them, the two last albums, so it kind of still stays <laughs> in the village somehow. It's so tricky because, I mean, every time I got a chance to do like, for example, like Destruction Reunion, I was a huge Destruction fan in, in the mid 80s. Grew up on it, I saw them 88 when I was 18 in America. I was like, yeah, I finally can see them and shit. And, you know, suddenly you look around and, uh, at the mixer table and you see Mike on one side and you see Schmier on the other side. And it's like, whoa, wake up, wake up, you know? Same thing, yeah, with Celtic Frost. Same with Possessed, when they asked if I wanted to um, 
go and record them. So th there's there's a lot of bands. I, it's really hard to say. It's like asking you, you have to choose with your children, which one is your favorite child? So I, I, I really don't know. I'm just really happy that I recorded everything, even things that have been hard and like maybe not so good uh, to, to the creme de la creme, you know, it, it's something I enjoyed anyhow. No, I don't know. I think, I don't know, that, that's a tough question. Uh, let's get Jack Black in there instead. Flames on my dick, balls on fire, I don't know. I don't know, probably something with this guy. I don't know, either a pilot or astronaut, but yeah, you know, but it, dreams, you know, of course. I, I really don't know what I would do. I would probably do like all my other friends do at home. Do the same thing as they do. Go to work and then come home, go to work, come home. So, most likely. So I, I, I feel very fortunate to be able to, to go out and, you know, uh, on tours and festivals and things like that, you know, without having to pay for it yourself, you know. I don't have to pay to play anymore, put it that way. Which is, I'm very uh, fortunate and I'm happy for that. <laughs>